You're listening to Football Friday Night On Demand exclusively on 600 ESPN El Paso. Stay up to date with high school football scores, updates, and news by downloading the free 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. Friday night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Week 4 edition of high school football. Several games in the books, including our 915 Tours Game of the Week in uh, at Loewenberg Stadium. Del Valle tops Canatillo 31 to 7. That is a final. We'll hear from Steve Escajeda in just a moment. In 6A, earlier today, the early game at the sack, Pebble Hills tops El Dorado 49 to 10. Big one over at Cougar Stadium in the fourth quarter. Americus leads Franklin 16 to 7. Also in the fourth, Chapin once led Parkland by 18. It's now just a one score game. 43-36, Chapin leads Parkland in the fourth quarter. Also in the fourth, Austin leads undefeated Hanks 20-13. Over at Riverfront Stadium, Riverside leads Alamogordo 35-28. At halftime, East Lake leads Coronado 22-13. It's a final out in Fabens. El Paso High tops the Fabens Wildcats 26-8. Burgess leads a tight one over Isleta, 28-26. Andrus also leads a tight one over Horizon, 24-21 Eagles over the Scorpions. Mountain View leads Irvin, 48-3 in the fourth. Meanwhile, down at Lions Stadium, Bel Air leads Clint, 37-29. It's a final in San Elizario. Sanelli defeats Tornillo, 47-6. Meanwhile, Cathedral leads Anthony 24-7. On to the land of enchantment. Las Cruces High leads Mayfield 37-7 in the third quarter. Gadsden tops Oregon Mountain 40-7. And Hatch Valley leads Chaparral 26-13. And Bo, this final just in from R.E. McKee Stadium, a wild one. Our Russ Bannister tells us the Hanks Knights were down 20-7, to came storming back. Jude Blanco, 50-yard screen pass, gets them within a score. They recover an onside kick. Marcos Porres, the 10-yard touchdown pass to Guillermo Aguilar. But don't get your hopes up too high, Knights fans. They go for two. His name is Valise. It's oh. not Chuck. But it's Scott, and they come from the same folks, and they act the same way. Uh, You don't go for a tie when there's a chance you can go for a win, and that's exactly what they did. Two-point conversion, no good. That with 150 left in the contest, Austin able to uh, drag out the rest of the time and walk away with a slim, exciting one-point win, 20-19. to For Coach Pichardo and those Austin Panthers, they get by previously undefeated Hanks. The Fighting Panthers, what a win for Austin. The first victory of the season. Austin approves to 1-3, and three, knocking off undefeated Hanks 20-19. to 19. Let's head out to our 915 Tours Game of the Week and an update from Steve Escajeda as this one just went final at Canatillo's Lowenberg Stadium. Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, we expected a really good game here tonight between Del Valle and Canatillo. And we got anything but as Del Valle totally shut down the Eagles 31-7 to here in the Upper Valley. Uh, Del Valle wasted no time getting on the board early in the first quarter. Sophomore quarterback Jake Fetty uh, connecting with Jonathan Estrada with a 49-yard touchdown pass to put the Del Valle up 7 uh, Diego Fausto added a 32-yard field goal. First play of the second quarter, and that's where we stood at halftime, 10 nothing Del Valle. They just kept things going on in the third quarter. Jake Fetty, uh, that quarterback again, 25 yards to Jonathan Estrada for the second time in the ball game, And then Fetty had a one-yard run late in the third quarter to make it 24 nothing. Fetty, a five-yard touchdown pass to Ryu Nunez, 5.22 to go in the ball game to make it 31 nothing. Canotillo finally got a drive going with 54 seconds to go. Matthew Gasca, the uh, backup quarterback, ran it in from seven yards out to at least put Canotillo on the scoreboard. With the victory, Del Valle is uh, three and one on the season now, while Canotillo falls to two and two. We'll be right back in a little bit with uh, some uh, final individual stats on the evening. But like I said, it's all over here at Canotillo, Del Valle, controlling it from the start, defeating Canotillo 31 to seven. 
All right, Steve, thank you very much. We'll get your Boston's Pizza post-game report in just a little bit. We have an exciting game going on at Cougar Stadium. Franklin Cougars just hit a field goal to cut the America's lead to six. Let's head out to Adrian Broaddus for an update from Cougar Stadium. Adrian. Thank you, guys. 142 left here in this one. America's up 16-10 to 10 over Franklin. And as I'm speaking, Mark Moore just fumbled the ball near midfield, and the Cougars have the ball back inside America's territory with a chance to score. America's guys was trying to drain the clock here on this possession. Quarterback Mark Moore, uh, he just fumbled the snap, and Franklin now has it at their own 40, uh, at the America's 41-yard line threatening to score to try to rally back and win this one. I'll just recap a little bit, guys. America recovered a pooch kick at the Franklin 28-yard line. The Trailblazers could not score on that drive. They led 16-7 to at this point. They missed a field goal. Franklin drove all the way down to the 15-yard line. They had to settle for a 32-yard field goal by Juan Pablo Soto. That brings us to 16-10, to 136 left. We got a great game out here on the west side of town. Fantastic, Adrian. Stay on. We're going to go back to you in just a moment. We have another exciting game over at Tony Shaw Field at Irvin Memorial Stadium, a tight one between the Chapin Huskies and the Parkland Matadors. Let's go out to Joe Rodriguez at Irvin Memorial for an update on Chapin and Parkland. Joe. 2.30 left in the ball game, man. It is Chapin leading Parkland by the score of 43 to 36. We have Chapin at the Parkland 35-yard line, fourth and one with 2.30 to go in the ball game. And here it is. Chapin coming out. Two receivers left, one right, some pistol formation. Uh, we have a handoff to uh, the tailback for the Chapin. And he picks up five yards and a first down for Chapin with 2.23, and the clock is ticking. We do have a flag on the play for. The Chapin Huskies, and it looks like that play just might be coming back. Chapin does have one timeout with 2.23 left. It is important to tell you that Chapin has led a majority of this game until Kayla Martinez had a 61-yard uh, pink six uh, with three minutes left to make it 35-36 from there. Um, Parkland went on, or excuse me, Chapin went on to score to make it 43-36 to where it brings us to where we're at right now. And that was a holding penalty on the Chapin Huskies. So now it is fourth and 11 for Chapin. And they will punt with two minutes and 10 seconds left in the game. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you all and just come back to me. Fantastic, Joe. Thank you very much. Stay on the line. We'll come back to you in just a moment. We do have some score updates for you. And our Ignitify local scoreboard, Andrus has scored again. Andrus now leads Horizon 30-21 to in the fourth quarter. Also, Isleta retakes a lead over the Burgess Mustangs. Late in the fourth quarter, Isleta leads Burgess 34-28. We have a final from Riverfront Stadium. Riverside defeats Alamogordo 35-28. We'll have a wrap-up from J.D. Sursley in just a little bit. Let's head back out to Cougar Stadium. Join Adrian Broaddus for an update of the exciting 6A matchup between Americus and Franklin. Adrian. 115 left in this game. America's lead 16 to 10 over Franklin. Cougars have it fourth and 10 at the America's 41 yard line. Shea Smith comes out. No, Jason Villagranda. He was hurt in this game. No, Elias Rangel. He was hurt in this game as well. In fact, the ambulance had to come out fourth and 10 coming up. Shea Smith drops back to pass. Three step drop. Looks to his right. He finds his target down the middle. His pass is tipped. And it is intercepted. America is going to win this game. And they tipped, it was a tip pass and intercepted for the Trailblazers. You'll credit on that one. That it will be their third interception on the night. And what a fantastic performance by this American defense. Credit Alexander Ortiz with the interception on that one for America's. They will take over with 106 left in this one. America's is going to hang on and win this game. They're up 16 to 10 over Franklin. A huge, what soon to be win for the America's Trailblazers at Franklin. A huge 6A win for. Yeah, I can't say I'm an extremely surprised uh, seeing both of these teams. Uh, you know, early in the season, despite the records, America. 
America's maybe looks a little better than what I saw from Franklin last week at the Sun Bowl. By the way, this is just in from our Joe Rodriguez. Course, a one-score game. Chabin and Parkland. Parkland takes the punt, and they'll start at their own 20-yard line. Less than two minutes left in that contest, so the Matadors looking to drive the field and tie this thing up. We're going to go back to Joe Rodriguez in just a moment. He's at Irvin Memorial Stadium. We have an update. Bel Air once led Clint 37-21 in the fourth quarter. Bel Air led by 16. It is now tied at 37, just a few moments left. So we'll keep you updated on that one. Let's head back out to Joe Rodriguez, get an update from the Chapin-Parkland game. Chapin leads by a touchdown. Joe, what do you got for us? Well, one minute to go in the ball game, and it is second and one at the Parkland 42-yard line. A pass completed right now by quarterback Eric Martinez to Taishim uh, Dawson, and it is second and one coming on. And we do have a brief stoppage in play. I do want to bring it up. Parkland does have two timeouts left in the ball game, and they readjusted the clock to one eleven. That's what the stoppage in play was. Uh, the play clock is running now, and Parkland is coming up to the line at their own 42-yard line. Shotgun pistol formation. Three receivers right, one left. Quarterback backs up. He's looking. He's scrambling. He tosses it up in the air towards the Parkland sideline uh, side for an incomplete pass, and it'll be third and less than one, third and short and one, with 104 to go in the ball game for the Parkland Matadors. Got to say that uh, some of the leaders here for the Parkland Matadors definitely has to be Eric Ortiz, who has 21 carries for 111 yards. Yes, he is a quarterback, but he's been getting it done with his legs tonight. He takes the snap and he runs it, assures himself of the first down for a quick five-yard pickup, advancing the ball to the Parkland 49-yard line, 58 seconds, and the clock will tick when they set the chains down. Parkland is already at the line of scrimmage. Once again, two receivers left, two receivers right. Pistol formation for Ortiz as he backs up, and he takes the sack. It is the second time he has been sacked tonight uh, for Ortiz, and it is a loss of five with 41 seconds left. And Parkland has taken their second time out of the second half with 41 seconds. It will be second and 15 from the Parkland 45-yard line with 41 seconds left, gentlemen. Okay, Joe, thank you so much. Stay on the line. We'll get back to you in just a moment. Uh, what, what a game there. Chapin defense coming up big. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. And, uh, you know, you always talk about their offense, but they say defense wins championships. Well, they're, they're trying to win a contest. Speaking of wins, uh, out from Riverfront Stadium, this in from J, uh, J.D. Sursley, the Riverside Rangers hold off uh, Alan Magordo, t- took a big lead early, and like I said, held on late. 35-28, they win that one. Uh, Sebastian Archibike. Uh, an INT as uh, Alan McGordo looking for, like Parkland's doing, a tying drive and uh, not going to get at the interception. And Riverside holds on. They move to 3-1. and one. We have an update from Prep 1's Jesse Tovar down at Clint's Lions Stadium. Bel Air retakes the lead. One minute to go. Bel Air gets a touchdown. Bel Air leads Clint 44-37. Boy, uh, Bel Air once led this game by 16 points at the start of the fourth quarter. Coming down to the wire, once again, Bel Air leads Clint 44-37 with a minute to go down at Clint's Lions Stadium. Let's head back to Joe Rodriguez at Irvin Memorial Stadium for an update on Parkland and Chapin. Parkland looking to drive to tie this game. Joe. Parkland Matadors just ran the ball for five yards. Anthony Carrillo on the carry, and it'll be third and ten from the Parkland uh, uh, 49-yard line, and Parkland just called their last timeout of the game for the Parkland Matadors with 34 seconds left in the game, and it'll be a third and 10 coming up for uh, Coach McWhorter's Parkland Matadors here tonight at Parkland. Gentlemen, right now we are in a timeout. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. Please stay on the line. We'll come back to you in just a moment. Uh, what this game means, well, Parkland coming in this game undefeated at 3-0, and obviously a non-district game. Chapin coming in 1-1. One and one. Uh, What do you see for this one coming down to the wire here? Yeah, well, I'm not really surprised what's been interesting, and in, uh, Gerard's been uh, reporting it throughout the night, you know, during baseball. But uh, uh, the starting 
quarterback tonight was not uh, Davion Singleton. Uh, he actually lined up at uh, wide receiver and made an impact early on. Uh, there was a touchdown catch somewhere in uh, my scribbly writing. Yeah, actually, uh, when Chapin went up 21-7, to that was a, a, a Davion Singleton, a 23-yard uh, TD. Before the Parkland comeback, Ortiz, a 27-yard run just before halftime to get within a 21-10. Uh, Fabian Contreras has been terrific for Parkland. A couple of TD catches in this one. Uh, he has won at least one every week. So it's four straight weeks he's had a, a TD reception. So, uh, you know, if somebody's going to make a play, you got Anthony Carrillo who had seven touchdowns coming into this one. You have Contreras and you have Joe Rodriguez. Very much so. Another final from Franklin's Cougar Stadium. Americus tops Franklin 16-10. to That is a final. Local scoreboard brought to you by Ignitify. Finding a trustworthy person to work on your AC might be difficult. Ignitify is here to help. They have over 20 years of experience in El Paso and a five-star rating on Google. Don't take it from us. Call them today to set up an appointment. Ignitify is known for maintenance and repairs to your cooling system. Ignitifyep.com. So back out to Irvin Memorial Stadium. Enjoy Joe Rodriguez for an update on Parkland and shape it. Joe. Interception, ladies and gentlemen, by the Chapin Huskies secondary on third and ten. Eric Ortiz heaved it to Fabian Cervantes. Cervantes gets called, or they call pass interference on Cervantes. Parkland takes the ball, or Parkland gets the ball first and ten at the Chapin 35-yard line. Ortiz went deep again into double coverage. He threw it, and Parkland safety was able to come up with, to come up with the uh, pass it is uh, the defender Harris uh, number excuse me sorry Devin Harris number 12 for the Chapin Huskies and they're going to take over the ball at their own four yard line with 19 seconds to go it looks like the Chapin Huskies on homecoming night are going to be able to hang on for the win and pick up their second win of the season handing Parkland in the process their first loss of the season. I'm assuming that uh, victory formation, yep, that is what's going on. So Chapin will go on to pick up the victory. I'm going to send it back to you on the studios. Come back to me for a final recap and all of the offensive stats for tonight's game. And it is a final. Chapin will defeat Parkland by the score of 43-36. to Joe Rodriguez, thank you so much. We'll get your Boston's Pizza postgame report in just a little bit. What a win for Ryan Warner and the Chapin Huskies, improving to 2-1, and one, dropping Parkland for the first time this season. Parkland and Matadors dropped to 3-1. and one. Battle of Northeast teams. Chapin comes out on top, 43-36. We have another final from the Northeast. Andrus tops Horizon 30 to 21. Andrus gets their first victory of the season. Uh, Paul, what do you? Uh, before we take a break here, what do you take on that one? A, a big stand by the Chapin defense. Uh, huge, of course. But uh, the, the, the the overarching thing I see throughout the night is a change of style for Chapin. Remember Singleton, the quarterback. It's Ethan Rivera. Yeah, you might know his brother Anthony Rivera, terrific uh, receiver. Last several years, graduated a year ago. But um, more of a throwing th- team tonight. Uh, Savian Jordan, a 20-yard TD. Uh, four total touchdown passes by Rivera. Remember, he's a kid who's only started two games, and that's uh, due to two ACLs. I think this is the guy that would have been the quarterback maybe last year. Got one start, and then he was on the shelf, as per usual. Got to play last week when uh, Singleton, excuse me, two weeks ago when Singleton was on the shelf, little dinged up week one. Uh, pretty effective. Singleton comes back. They put him at receiver and other places, as as you do with terrific athletes. Rivera gets to uh, gets the snaps at QB, and as I said, they move the ball through the air tonight, and that's traditionally, at least over the last, uh, let's say, decade, what Chapin has loved to do, air it out and find those receivers. Very much so. We have a final from Clint's Lions Stadium. Bel Air holds on to defeat Clint. Bel Air defeats Clint 44-37. Thank you to Prep One's Jesse Tovar for that update. Once again, 44-37 Bel Air improving to 4-0 with a win tonight against Clint. Hey, we're going to take a break. Come back with all your scores. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Welcome back to week four of Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN Radio. Now talking about final scores in our Ignitify local scoreboard. In 6A, Pebble Hills tops El Dorado 49-10, a slugfest at Franklin's Cougar Stadium. Americus tops Franklin 16-10. Elsewhere in uh, 5A in our Game of the Week, 915 Tours Game of the Week, Del Valle tops Canateo 31-7. Chapin tops Parkland 43-36. Austin hands Hanks their first loss of the season 20-19. Riverside tops Alamogordo 35-28. Bel Air defeats Clint 44-37. Andrus defeats Horizon 30-21. El Paso High tops Fabens 26-8. San Elizario defeats Tornillo 47-6. And Cathedral, it's a final at Burgess High School. The Irish top Anthony 30-7. In the land of enchantment, Las Cruces High tops Mayfield 44-7 to win their eighth straight over the Mayfield Trojans. Meanwhile, Gadsden at their new Sal Gonzalez Stadium. Gadsden tops Oregon Mountain 40-7. Uh, elsewhere, Isleta currently leads Burgess 34-28, and Hatch Valley leads Chaparral 26-13. Last check, Mountain View leads Irvin 48-3. Bo Bagley, the internet is a wonderful and Absolutely. terrible thing. Wild West, according to what I'm looking at, the Burgess Mustangs may not be trailing 34-28 anymore. Touchdown in the books and the extra point, 35-34, according to what I'm seeing. Burgess leads Asleta. Burgess kicks off. Asleta has the ball on their own 40-yard line, and that was at 10-44. Oh, double check. Okay. Asleta on the drive. Uh, inside the Burgess 20, and that was a while ago. 35-34, Burgess with a one-point slim lead. Asleta and a field goal kicker inside the Burgess 20, and that was uh, about 10 minutes ago. Okay, we're going to keep you updated on that one. An exciting one at the reservation between Isleta and Burgess. We also have a fun one between Eastlake and Coronado, the late game at the Student Activities Complex. Last check, Eastlake led Coronado 22-13 at halftime. Let's go to Ryan Vidalis at the sack for an update on Eastlake hosting Coronado. We are here at the Soro. The Sorcora Activities Complex is 10.37 left in the fourth quarter, and it is actually Eastlake, 28, Coronado, 19. Just before uh, coming on right now, uh, Coronado finally getting a little uh, something going through the air with quarterback Ben Wilson scrambling and finding Kaysen Golding uh, untouched in the end zone for 36 yards. That uh, allowed Coronado Thunderbirds to pull a little bit closer uh, they just called a timeout right now. Coronado's coming out, attempting to go for two. They've been having, uh, similar to last week, extra point problems, kicking problems. It's been haunting them all night, along with the penalties. We've got Coronado coming out right now, getting ready to line up, go for those two-point conversions. you got three receivers to the left, one running back. Ball is snapped. Wilson scrambling to the right, and he finds his running back in the flat for the two-point conversion. So that helps a lot. They're now going to be 21 to 28. That ends up making them pull a little bit closer in this game. Uh, They still got some work to do with 10 minutes and 37 seconds left in the fourth quarter. That is Eastlake 28, Coronado 21. And thank you very much. Great job, Ryan. We'll get back to you in just a little bit for an update. Uh, plenty of time, 10 minutes for Coronado, but remember we've been talking about it for the last couple of weeks. Uh, your quarterback's, uh, your regular starting quarterback, Owen Levesque, he's out, which by the way also has to be, happens to be the kicker and the punter. Your, uh, one of your top receivers, Ben Wilson, best athlete on the team, that's your quarterback, and he just did what he does well, run around and uh, found a man in the end zone. To get within seven, uh, Coronado Thunderbirds without their QB, Still in the fight. It wasn't quite good enough a week ago. We'll find out uh, in these final 10 minutes if it's good enough tonight. Absolutely. One of the slugfest games of the night this week uh, was Parkland at Chapin. For a final wrap-up, let's go out to Irvin Memorial Stadium and join Joe Rodriguez. Joe. 
Thank you very much, Bo. It is all final here where the Chapin Huskies on homecoming night have defeated the Parkland Matadors by the score of 43-36, to 36, uh, handing the Parkland Matadors their first loss of the season in the process. Let's get to the good stuff. Uh, let's go, uh, get some statistics here. For the victorious Chapin Huskies, they had 19 first downs. They ran the ball 33 times for 229 yards. Quarterback Evan Rivera was 13 for 25 with one pick, and it was a pick six that gave Parkland the lead temporarily for a total of 184 yards. Rivera did have three touchdown passes, a total offense for the Chapin Huskies of 413 yards. Uh, Got to give credit, a lot of credit, a big spark on the ground for the Chapin Huskies was Kerry Wade, who had 16 carries for 139 yards. He was not able to score, but he did pack a punch and was a, definitely a spark on the running attack for the Chapin Huskies. Meanwhile, uh, Davian Singleton, he sh- shifted today to the wide receiver position. He had seven carries for 91 yards, and I also have him for uh, three carries for a total of nine yards. He did have a four-yard loss on his final carry of the night. So it's going to be interesting to see moving forward what Coach Warner decides to do as far as Rivera and Singleton. If Singleton is going to stay as a wideout, he did present quite a headache for the Parkland Matadors here tonight at Irving. Over for the Parkland Matadors, they had 19 uh, first downs. They carried the ball 40 yards for 201 yards. Quarterback Eric Ortiz was 6-for-20 with one interception, the interception that ended the game tonight for a total of 93 yards, 294 yards uh, of total offense for the Parkland Matadors, over 100 yards short of their 404-yard offensive average thus far this season. The Matadors will host the Canutillo Eagles next week, while the Chapin Huskies will visit Del Valle, at Conquest Stadium. We'll go ahead and uh, call it a night out here in Northeast El Paso from Irving uh, High School, Tony Shaw Field, where the Chapin Huskies have defeated the Parkland Matadors by the score of 43-36. to All right, Joe Rodriguez with that Boston's Pizza post-game report. We'll see over at Boston's Pizza behind Top Golf and our Ignitify local scoreboard. Looks like we have some finals here. Once again, member Bel Air defeated Clint 44-17. I'm sorry, 44-37. Mountain View defeated Irvin 47-17. It looks like this game just went final. Isleta gets a late field goal. Isleta tops Burgess 37 35 big win for the Isleta Indians on the reservation. Let's head back out to our 915 Tours Game of the Week. Get a wrap up from Steve Escajeda with Canatillo hosting Delvai. Steve. Thanks a lot, guys. And uh, we're hoping for a, a close one here in the Upper Valley, but uh, it was never the case. Delvai knocking off uh, Canatillo 31 to 7. Uh, again, they were up 31 to nothing, and Canatillo finally got a score in in the last minute of the ball game. Uh, we have some individual stats. We said that uh, Canotillo had not had a 100-yard rusher in their first three games of the season. Well, now we can make it four. Uh, Dante Aguilar had 85 yards, good ball game, but 67 of those yards came on one play. Uh, so they were shut down most of the night, but again, he did have a nice evening. Uh, quarterback Jeremiah Knox for Canotillo, tough night. 5 out of 10 through the air for just 15 yards and an interception. And, uh, again, Canotillo just having trouble all night long. All they could have matched was 173 total yards on the night uh, and only 15, like we said, through the air. For the victorious conquistadores, uh, we've got a star in the making. They've had a ton of really good quarterbacks over the years. We could add another one. Sophomore Jake Fetty. Uh, finished the ball game tonight, 17 out of 25, 325 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Uh, he, by the way, he also carried the ball 10 times for 43 yards and another score. Um, he came into the ball game, six touchdowns, no interceptions. Now let's give him nine on the season and no picks. On the ground, uh, let's see, after him, uh, again, not too much after uh, after Fetty on the ground, but as far as catching the football, Jonathan Estrada, four catches, 98 yards, and two touchdowns. 
Also, Matt Lopez caught four passes for another 91 yards. And uh, Rayu Nunez uh, only had two catches, but one of them was also for a score. Uh, and we also came in saying that Canotillo always has one of the tough defenses in the city. They were averaging about 258 total yards. They were allowing every game tonight. Del Valle put 424 yards on them, uh, 99 on the ground, another 325 through the air, uh, averaging eight yards per play. Uh, this game was uh, lopsided from the very beginning. It's a final from the Upper Valley here in El Paso, Del Valle, all over County Field, 31-7. to all right, Steve, thank you very much for that Boston's Pizza post-game report. Boston's Pizza is your go-to sports watching destination all season long. Stop by Boston's Pizza for all the college football and NFL Sundays, along with UFC pay-per-view bites. Never a cover. Boston's Pizza is family-friendly, located on the west side right in front of Top Golf. Learn more on social media by following Boston Pizza El Paso. Now an exciting game between Coronado and East Lake, the late game at the SAC. Let's head back out to the SAC and join Ryan Vidalis for an update. Ryan. With 7.50 left in this game, it is East Lake 28, Coronado 21. On the ensuing drive after that Coronado touchdown, Eastlake actually gifts one to the Coronado Thunderbirds. It is fourth down, and Eastlake, for some reason, decides to go for it on their own 36-yard line. Uh, they attempt a pass. It comes up incomplete, and Coronado takes over with a short field. However, Coronado fails to capitalize on uh, – it's honestly been the story of the night, capitalizing off of these uh, big turnovers, big uh, moments like this. They end up going uh, – Three plays, not getting much yards, and then quarterback Ben Wilson decides to throw a deep ball that gets picked off by Eastlake's Dominic Soto on the two-yard line. Eastlake now has the ball, running it, trying to kill some clock with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. It is Eastlake 28 and Coronado 21. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Uh, exciting game there between the, the Falcons and the T-Birds. And another exciting game between the America's Trailblazers and Franklin Cougars for a Boston's Pizza postgame report. Let's go back out to Cougar Stadium and join Adrian Broadus for this postgame report. Adrian. Thank you guys very much. That's right. It is the final. The America's Trailblazers have upset the Franklin Cougars tonight, 16 16- to 10 and now on the season america's has improved to two and two on the year meanwhile franklin their first loss of the season they are now three and one on the year let's start off with uh both teams guys six combined turnovers there was three turnovers on downs as well in this game it just went back and forth and uh you look at what happened in the first half america's had a chance to go ahead in this one late in the first half, and it was actually a late field goal that put him ahead 10-7. to In the first half alone, the America's defense stopped Franklin three different times inside the Trailblazers' 40-yard line. And I'm talking about Franklin putting together some nice drives but not able to capitalize on those drives in the in this game. And... um in the second half, it was America's who capitalized off a 52-yard rush from Cameron Johnson early in the third quarter. Uh, the Franklin Cougars uh, actually recovered a fumble at their own three-yard line. Then Franklin uh, capitalized off a 56-yard pass from Shea Smith to wide receiver Elias Ron Hell all the way down to the America's 23-yard line, but an interception happened. So I think that one was the the turning point of the game for America's. America's was able to really clamp down, hold uh, the ball as as long as they could. Uh, Franklin only got a field goal in the second half, but it's largely due to injuries, guys. You look on the Franklin side, uh, their star player of the night, six catches, over 120 receiving yards for wide receiver Elias Ronhell who, hey, guys, it was a scary situation. An ambulance came on the field, 20 minutes of stoppage time. He actually uh, dealt with a spine injury per uh, the booster parents in the booth, and unfortunately he had to be taken away inside 
uh, an ambulance from the game itself. Uh, Franklin really was down multiple players. They were down another wide receiver, Caleb Williams, who was hurt in this game. Jason Villagranda, who is their running back, the third string running back, by the way. He was hit and knocked out of this game as well and could not did not return back in this one. Franklin is now down 10 starters on their team. And, hey, quarterback Shea Smith, they're going to go as, much, as far as he can take them. He had their only touchdown of the game from five yards out, a rushing touchdown, but he did total two interceptions on this one. Now let's talk about the winning Trailblazers. They were led by running back and the sophomore sensation Cameron Johnson. Two touchdowns in this one. He also had 138 rushing yards in the second half alone. He had over 238 rushing yards in this game, and just a really impressive performance from Johnson throughout it. Defensively, give a, give a lot of credit to Anthony Miranda, who had an interception. He had, now has three on the season. Alex Ortiz also had an interception for the Trailblazers. He has three on the season as well. America's next week, they take on Eastlake. A great game in 6A as they are trying to vie for playoff contention. Meanwhile, Franklin will take on Socorro next week as well. So that will do it for us live at Franklin High School. And the Americas Trailblazers come up with a big upset, 16-10 to 10 over Franklin. All right, Adrian, thank you very much. Uh, great job out there at Cougar Stadium. A tough loss for the Franklin Cougars, but big win for the America's Trailblazers. Gets them back into that 6A playoff race. Yeah, huge. We talked about this in the pregame show. This is an America's uh, Trailblazers team, brand-new head coach. Each of the last two weeks lost a game on the final snap of the contest. Odessa High kicked a field goal at the buzzer to beat him 22-20 two weeks ago. And then, of course, the uh, triple overtime marathon with uh, Montwood a week ago and uh, the two-point conversion from Montwood. America's goes down. As I said, that's a tough pill to swallow, especially with a new sheriff in town. This was a must-win. We said that uh, before the contest, and that's what it was. And America's came through. Very much so. Once again, our to our Ignitify local scoreboard, America's tops Franklin 16-10. to Earlier today, Pebble Hills defeats El Dorado 49-10. to Late in the fourth quarter, Eastlake currently leads Coronado 28-21. That game in the late game at the sack. In our 915 Tours game of the week, Delvai tops Canateo 31-7. Big game over at Irvin Memorial Stadium. Chapin defeats Parkland 43-36. Austin holds on to defeat Hanks 20-19. Riverside tops Alamogordo 35-28. Uh, elsewhere, Burgess and Isleta. What a slugfest. Isleta gets a late interception, defeats Burgess 37 37- 35. Andrus tops Horizon 30 to 21. El Paso High tops Fabens 26 to 8. Bel Air defeats Clint 44 37. Mountain View defeats Irvin 47 to 17. And San Elizario defeats Tornillo 47 to 6. Over at Burgess Mustang Stadium, Cathedral tops previously undefeated Anthony 30 to 7. Then the Land of Enchantment. Las Cruces High defeats Mayfield 44-7. Hatch Valley defeats Chaparral 37-19. And Gadsden all over Oregon Mountain 40-7. And Ryan Videla shoots us this note from the sack. Uh, good news for Eastlake. Luke Lamelli, the QB, quarterback draw, 42 yards, finds pay dirt. Eastlake now up uh, two scores, 34-21. 347 left in that contest. Huge play. Big touchdown for the East Lake Falcons. Hey, another one, a big play for the Austin Panthers and the Hanks Knights. Hanks went for two and the win came up short. For Boston's Pizza Post Game Report, let's go out to Ari McKee Stadium and join Russ Bannister. Russ, take it away. Well, it was a thriller, <laughs> needless to say. Um, Austin dominated. The second half today uh, for their win, out of the 24 minutes of the second half, they dominated and controlled the ball 19 minutes to Hanks 5. Uh, for uh, Austin tonight, it was the uh, Ruben Bastillos night. He had, uh, oh, excuse me, he had uh, 
167 yards, averaged 5.3 per carry. Uh, for Austin, they had 46 uh, carries for uh, 246 yards. Uh, their defense uh, just really kind of curled their back up and then held Hanks because Hanks was threatening. Uh, and they, they held they held Hanks uh, in check. But um, really, like I said, they uh, Hanks scored, uh, had the onside kick. This is all about two minutes to go. A pass from uh, uh, Marcus uh, Portis um, for a, a pa- uh, excuse me, a pass uh, from uh, Marcus Porras, uh for a touchdown. And a typical uh, Valise move, just like his brother uh, Chuck, he's not going to go for a tie. He went for a win, and they had a, a sprint out to the right. Uh, it was outstanding defense on uh, Austin's part. They knocked the ball down. And this is with about just seconds left in the game. Kickoff, uh, they tried an onside kick again. Uh, Austin was prepared for it. They got the ball and just basically ran the clock out. Um, so it's it was it was a thriller. So from the Key Stadium, Austin High School defeats uh, the Hank Knights in their homecoming, twenty to nineteen. All right, Russ, thank you very much. We'll see you at our post-games hotspot, Boston's Pizza, right next to Top Golf and West El Paso. Our spot for college football Saturdays, NFL Sundays, and UFC pay-per-view fights. Russ, thank you so much. A big win for the Riverside Rangers over the Alamogordo Tigers. For a Boston's Pizza post-game report, let's head out to Riverfront Stadium and join J.D. Sursley. J.D. Yeah, man, um, Riverside definitely uh, knows how to put on a show every time. I saw them lose by a point week one, 34-33 to Isleta. This this week they get the victory, but they did not uh, make it easy on themselves in the second half. Riverside in the first half was very dominant, into the half at 28-7. to And then uh, at that point, Derek Vasquez had three touchdowns, 12 runs for 85 yards, and then um, Carlos... Rojas, who did a sweep run left, 60-yard touchdown scamper. Uh, I have to point out that Noah Ramirez, their star-studded running back, averaging 137 yards per game, did not play this week because he's in concussion protocol from last week's uh, banger that he got uh, last week against Burgess. Uh, Tua Tua Samoa Misioka, he had... 13, uh, 15 runs, 87 yards on the ground. And then Tristan Lopez had a nine-yard touchdown later in the game. Um, Alamogordo in the second half really turned on uh, the ground and pound. Um, the best player on that squad, Anthony Audette, he had 25 carries for 212 yards, and he ended the night with two touchdowns. Uh, Liza Montoya ended up with two touchdowns, one uh, awesome streak, uh, 54 touchdown, uh, 54 yards to make things interesting. And once uh, Alamogordo got everything on their side and their momentum, they got a good stop against Riverside towards the end. They were driving down, and then unfortunately, Alamogordo had a miscommunication between quarterback and DeAndre Martin, um, he, who he kind of stumbled and maybe like just stopped running his route and uh, Eliza Montoya thought he was going to keep running, so he throws it in the air, and then Sebastian Archibecki for Riverside, number 24, gets the saving game-saving interception before they're gonna, about to go into overtime. So Riverside clinches with the win, 35, Alamogordo, 28. All right, J.D., thank you so much. We'll see you at our postgame hotspot, Boston's Pizza by Top Golf in West El Paso. Big win for the Riverside Rangers, improving to 3-1 and one on the young season. 
Yeah, I'd say a, a big win from 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 them. I remember this is a team that stubbed their toe week one. Uh, what was it? 30, 34, 33 lost Esleta. They go for two after the big catch by the freshman uh, Rojas. I, I didn't hear his numbers uh, from uh, JD preoccupied, but remember that freshman had caught over a hundred yards worth of balls each of the first three weeks. These, I don't know what these freshmen are drinking these days, but they just show up and they start performing. Uh, like right on the spot. Oh, by the way, speaking of freshmen, the uh, the best from a year ago, uh, Ray Estrada, El Dorado again did not play in that uh, 4 p.m. loss to Pebble Hill, so he's he's missed. Uh, he played week two for a half. They had to shut him down again, and uh, he hasn't been back in since. All right, we're gonna take a break. Come back for an update on East Lake in Coronado, and then our top athlete, sponsored by the Oscar Arieta Agency. We'll have that and more next. You're listening to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. Welcome back to Football Friday Night as we're wrapping up high school football in the borderland. One game currently going on, just a couple minutes left in the fourth quarter. Eastlake leads Coronado 34-21. And our Ignitify local scoreboard, Ignitify, your AC installation services, visit ignitifyep.com to get started today. And our 915 Tours Game of the Week, Delvai tops Canateo 31 to 7. Americus tops Franklin 16 to 10. Meanwhile, Pebble Hills all over El Dorado 49 to 10. 
Parkland and Chapin, a slugfest at Irvin Memorial Stadium. Chapin defeats the Matadors 43-36. Austin holds on to defeat previously undefeated Hanks 20-19, while Riverside tops Alamogordo 35-28. Burgess and Isleta down at the reservation. The Indians hold on to top the Mustangs 37-35. Andrus over Horizon 30-21. Meanwhile, El Paso High over the Wildcats of Fabens 26-8. Bel Air scores a late touchdown to defeat Clint 44-37. While Mountain View all over the Irvin Rockets 47-17. San Elizario tops Tornillo 47-6. And Cathedral defeats Beats previously undefeated Anthony 30 to 7. In the land of enchantment, up in New Mexico and Las Cruces High, defeats Mayfield 44 to 7. Gadsden all over Oregon Mountain 40 to 7. And Hatch Valley defeats Chaparral 37 19. We'll head back out of the student activities complex in just a moment. First, here's Paul McKinnon with our out of town scoreboard. Thanks a lot, Bo. Uh, took my eye off this for a while. Uh, some of these, uh, not final, but uh, Midland Legacy bit off more than they could chew tonight. Uh, went up to Cibola Steel. And at last check, uh, 41 to 17 was that count. Legacy not coming back from that one, even though don't have it as a final. Elsewhere, San Angelo Central gives undefeated Belton a pretty good run at home. Uh, Belton moves to 4 0, though, with the 41 38 win. Central uh, on the struggle, 1 and 3, their only victory. Uh, that was down here uh, versus uh, Montwood. Elsewhere, uh, Permian also falls. They go to Harker Heights, and uh, Heights uh, pulls it out at home, 27 25 in a narrow one. They move to 2 and 2. Permian drops to 2 and 2. Elsewhere, Midland High. Wow, what's in the water at Midland? 36 to 8. They beat Lubbock Monterey. And by the way, that's a good Lubbock Monterey team. Their two wins uh, in now four games are two good wins. 36 to 8. Midland stays undefeated. Also uh, in an arrow one, uh, Odessa. 36 to 35. They hold off Amarillo. Moves to 2 and 1. Amarillo, of course, playing a bunch of 6 8 teams. Uh, they fall to 1 and 3. Here's another good one. Abilene. Remember, they beat Permian week one. Well, they fall to 2 and 2 tonight. Friendship. Holds on 17 to 12, and that was uh, just outside of Lubbock, where friendship is 17 to 12. Friendship moves to 4 and 0. Thursday night, or Lubbock Cooper gets revenge for last week's narrow loss, 34 to 7. They put a whipping on uh, Wichita Falls Ryder. That's usually a much better game. Ryder three and one. Their first loss. Cooper uh, moves back to two and two. And oh, how the mighty have fallen. Amarillo Tascosa. They can't get out of bed this season. <laughs> Herford stays undefeated, moves to 4 0 with the 26 14 win at Amarillo. Wow. Ouch. Canyon in another Thursday nighter. They take out Caprock, 17 zip, move to 3 1. Caprock falls to 1 3. Plainview stays undefeated. They go to 4 0 with a 14 10 win over Dumas. Last we checked, West Plains was up on Paladuro, 14 7. Lubbock High with a big win over Lakeview. Of course, a lower lower level team, but uh, Lubbock, they got to get their wins where they can get them, and they do tonight, 43-41. They move to 2-2. Two and two. Lakeview falls to 1-3. and three. Abilene Wiley played a tough schedule, uh, dropped a close one to, to Cooper. Forty. Oh, excuse me, that's district still to go. They beat Stephenville, a good Stephenville tonight, 41-32 at Stephenville. Just a couple more scores. Fort Stockton stays undefeated, 4-0. They hold off Crane, 37-27. And Pecos moves to 2-1 and with a 20-6 victory over Stanton. And Bo Bagley, for the first time this year, that is your out-of-town scoreboard. There we go. Paul McKinnon, thank you very much. Looks like we have a final out of the Student Activities Complex. Let's head out to Ryan Vidalis for an update and a post-game report from Eastlake, topping Coronado. Ryan. It is a final here at the Socorro Activities Complex. It was Eastlake 34, Coronado 21. Uh, Coronado really struggled in this game as far as miscues go. Uh, really struggled to get their offense going with four turnovers, two forced fumbles, and two interceptions in this game. It was really hard for Coronado to come back out of this. Quarterback Ben Wilson did try his best to go ahead and take care of that team on his shoulders. He finished with five completions out of eight attempts. 107 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. 
running back Thomas Murray from the Coronado T-Birds had 18 carries, 94 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, he was a workhorse in this game. However, they just really couldn't muster uh, capitalizing off of those uh, turnovers or any sort of big plays. Eastlake, on the other hand, quarterback Luke Lomeli had a very efficient game, uh, completing 12 out of 21 passes for 194 yards and two touchdowns, no interceptions. Also added 11 carries for 67 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Uh, wide receiver Ivan Medrano finished with four catches for 68 yards and one touchdown. And overall, the East Lake offense had 54 plays for 354 yards. So very efficient, especially in the end. If uh, it's any consolation for Coronado, I spoke with Coach Mike Cry prior to the game, and he did mention that quarterback Owen Levesque is uh, doing well, looking to hopefully come back within the next two weeks. He did suffer an MCL injury. So that might be something to look up for in the upcoming weeks. Maybe in two weeks, they might get quarterback Owen Levesque back in. Uh, but once again, it is a final here at the Socorro Activities Complex. It was East Lake 34, Coronado 21. All right, Ryan Vidalis, thank you for that report from the Student Activities Complex. We'll see you over at Boston's Pizza, our go-to sports watching destination all season long. They have college football on Saturdays, NFL football on Sundays, and UFC pay-per-view fights, all with no cover. Boston's Pizza, located near Top Golf. Follow them on social media by following Boston Pizza, El Paso. We're going to take a break, come back with our Oscar Arrieta Agency top athlete. You're tuning in to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso.
Welcome back to Football Friday Night right here on 600 ESPN El Paso as we wrap things down. The last game of the night, the late game over the sack, Eastlake tops Coronado 34-21. Visit 600ESPNElPaso.com for recaps, photos by Prep 1, and final scores for Football Friday Night. Make sure to subscribe to the Football Friday Night On Demand for the replay of each show. Football Friday Night On Demand is available wherever you get your podcasts. Time for our Senior Player of the Game brought to you by the Greater El Paso Paso Football Showcase. Paul, who do you got for us? Well, for a big-time player, you got to go to a big-time game. And tonight, Hanks Austin was a big one. 3-0 Hanks versus 0-3 Austin. And 0-3 Austin comes up with a big W, 20-19. They hold off the Knights and uh, probably the biggest reason. The running back, the senior running back, Ruben Vestillos, goes for 167 yards and a couple of scores uh, which set up actually Andy Anduho, the seven-yard uh, touchdown catch late, the final points of the game, but it was Bustillos that laid the foundation for that 20-19 to win. And that is our Senior Player of the Night, brought to you by the Greater El Paso Football Showcase. Senior football players must have their SAT, ACT results submitted by December 1st to be eligible for the All-Star Combine and Game. Go to 915showcase.com or the social media pages to see weekly top five performers, scores, stats of teams and players, and more. Once again, 915showcase.com. Now time for our top athlete brought to you by the Oscar Arrieta Agency. Paul, who do you got? Well, in this case, uh, perseverance has a lot to do with this one. Uh, Ethan Rivera on the night, 13 for 25 with a pick for Chapin, 184 yards, but he did throw four touchdowns. And when I factor in, the guy's coming back from two ACL surgeries, gets his first start uh, two weeks ago. Remember Chapin off uh, last week when uh, when uh, quarterback Davion Singleton, the freshman who took over a year ago and played the final uh, six games, I think it was, plus playoffs, he steps in, and now he gets the starting gig tonight. Singleton uh, lined up mostly at uh, at uh, a receiver, wing back, you know, like uh, athletes do. Rivera steps in, and his Chapin Huskies put forty three points on a board against a good Parkland team, and of course, even rallied late on a Brandon Ortega sixteen yard run. The final points in that contest, but uh, four TDs to three different guys. Saving Jordan caught one. Uh, and uh, Singleton, of course, got one as well. And Chapin holds off Parkland 43-36 with what I call a brand-new quarterback that maybe could have been uh, starting you know, a full year ago, but he came through when they needed him tonight. A lot of points, and Chapin holds off Parkland. Yep, big win for the Chapin Huskies, 43-36 over the Parkland Matadors. And that's our top athlete brought to you by the Oscar Arrieta Agency. From a locally owned insurance agency, the Oscar Arrieta Agency is proud to serve El Paso. With four locations in town, the Oscar Arrieta Agency can help with your home, auto, and life insurance. Oscar Arrieta is the official insurance agent of the Utah Miners. Visit RiseUp915 to learn more about prizes and giveaways from the Oscar Arrieta Agency. Well, once again, that does it for here uh, for Football Friday Night. As we take a look at next week's game's big ones, El Dorado hosting Eastwood as Eastwood coming off a bye. Pebble Hills will travel to Coronado and potentially our game of the week by, presented by 915 Tours, the East Lake Falcons and the Americas Trailblazers. Americas, a really big win tonight over the Franklin Cougars. And East Lake still just rolling along. They caught, kind of held uh, Coronado at arm's length, of course, as as you pre mentioned, a uh, Coronado team without their starting quarterback. But uh, East Lake's rolling, and America's on a brand new high after a huge victory again over a pretty uh, injured Franklin uh, team tonight. Uh, the loss of Elias uh, Rangel, their top receiver. I remember game one, uh, the Kenny Teal win. Seven catches, 177 yards to uh, open the season, and he caught a touchdown, at least one, in, in every game, including the 14-13 uh, win over Coronado last week. So, so yeah, Frank Franklin, a bit of a mess uh, injury-wise, and America's took advantage, and boy, did they ever need that W. Absolutely. Some other big games next week. Del Valle hosts Chapin. Parkland will host Canateo. And a battle of the claw, the Austin Panthers 
will take on the El Paso High Tigers at R.R. Jones Stadium. But we're not done this weekend. We still have got Saturday high school football, 11 a.m. tomorrow in the Sun Bowl. It's Bowie and Jefferson, Battle of the South Side, first played in 1949. The Bowie Bears coming in 2-1, and one, while Jefferson still looking for their first victory of the season. Yeah, I, I plan to give that one a look. Uh, you know, if, if I'm awake uh, at least an hour before, I'm going to find my way, find a way to schlep my way to the Sun Bowl and take a look at that. That 4A district, 4A Division One, is just so interesting to me. Riverside's taken a little step back. Uh, we still see from Austin tonight a big win over a 5A Division One undefeated Hanks Knights. You know, uh, they're in it, and there's just... I think that one's gonna gonna be crazy. It's Is gonna, Riverside gonna be able to hold on for a third third straight year? It's, we'll see. Jefferson and Bel Air, uh, Jefferson and Bowie tomorrow. Battle of the South Side at the Sun Bowl, eleven a.m. kickoff here at uh, high school football Saturday in the Sun Bowl. Wow, that does it for us here at Football Friday Night for producer Angel Munoz and Paul McKinnon. I'm Bo Bagley. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.